Come back. There we go. Make sure I get everybody in. Okay, I'm going to keep my eyes open for people as they are joining. Super thrilled to welcome you. Let me see how I can. Let me just start this way. So welcome everybody. It is an honor. I'm just getting ready and admitting people as we come. We are in for a treat today. It is my honor and privilege to welcome an industry leading mentor and strategist has been supporting clients across a multitude of industries from corporate to executive influencers and thousands of creative entrepreneurs like many of you that are here today. Um, not only is she a rebel leader, shining a light on how business can look when we show up authentically aligned and in resonance with who we are, but she's also a mom and a, a five, imagine, and a beautiful love and caring person. She's a true creative sharing her wisdom through podcast, her toolkit launch community, um, an upcoming book called Whispers, um, what's it called? Whispers of the Heart and Soul. And she's truly someone who is changing how we can do business in in our lives to bring it together. I'm just going to check you guys if you want to mute yourselves, maybe, um, just so we can get the audio right. So who is this rebel leader that is changing how we do business, how we show up, how we communicate, share our message, our hearts with the people in our lives? And it can be as entrepreneurial, but also even such an inspiration of how we show up just in our relationships together. So it is my honor and my pleasure to welcome to the stage, White Dove Gannon. Ah! <laughs> so excited to be here, Sarah. You have no idea. It's been a long time coming to uh, to flip the script. And I've been, you know, dipping my toes into where that's going to be, how that's going to be. And this, the, you're, you're kind of kicking that off for me a little bit now that 2024 is here. We're kind of moving into the honest conversation topic. So thank you for having me oh, here today. Thank you. I mean, th this is part of what is so cool about when we share authentically, because you inspire me. It, it was like, how can I bring this message? And it pushes you. So isn't that a beautiful an eloquent way that it kind of brings it all together. So I want to I want to thank you for for being here, and um, we're going to dive in right away. At the end, we're going to leave some space and time for anyone who maybe has questions about the topics we discuss now, or maybe in their own how they show up or their course or whatever. We always everything is always welcomed and appreciated here, and you know a lot of. The Evolutionary Speaker Series is born from the Evolution Academy, and it's really about how do we live a life in resonance with who we are to believe, to be, to live. And so I always love to start with this question because so much of so much of that truth is who we are isn't the title and what we have. It's it's deeper than that. And so I always love to start off the inv the interview with who are you at your soul level? White Dove, share with us. <laughs> oh, I think I'm just, um, I'm just a rebel. Uh, I, I don't fit myself in a box and I've truly struggled with that actually for, for probably since my early thirties, I would say that it came a point where I was just like, who actually am I? You know, what does that look like? I can fit these roles. I can step into uh, what specifically people need me to be. But then if I look on the flip side of that, then when I look at myself, who am, what does that mean? I'm just a definition for other people, you know, a definition of, of their needs, which isn't, isn't wrong. So I'm not going to say that that is wrong in its own regard, being a mom, obviously there's responsibilities to that. And, you know, though that takes present time, uh, being an entrepreneur, we had, um, in this series of time was our, our sustainable farm venture that, you know, you land on 160 acres. Now, what are you going to do with it? Right. Zero farming experience. That's a whole different topic for another day, but y'all are welcome to pick my brain on it. But um, so side note, if the zombie apocalypse happens, I'm going to make it just saying that that's, that's what it looks like there. But that being said, that was um, probably my second entrepreneurial venture, but I didn't see it as an entrepreneurial venture. It was just, I have, 
I have things, I can learn skills, I go do. Um, but that role of being mom, of being entrepreneur, of being wife, of being business owner with my husband for 13 years in, in a multi-million dollar construction company, um, that, you know, learning the ground up with that particular endeavor taught me a lot. So that was most of my 20s, started the family in my 20s, got married in my 20s, had had a wildly successful construction business in my 20s. And then er, life takes a complete 90 degree turn. I mean, we're not talking 180. We're just like, let's head out here to left field. And so from there, then in my 30s, Jesse, our youngest of five, I was 31 when he was born. And so I, I was you know, doing my mom thing, normal things that I'd be doing. And one day someone asked me, what do you like? You know, do you like red wine or white wine? Do you, you know, what do you do in your spare time? I was like, what the heck even is that? What? Yeah. I mean, it was like, I literally don't know. My world exists of going to the grocery store with, you know, a baby, a toddler, screaming kids and some elementary age, you know, like sixth, seventh graders, you know, it's or elementary to middle school. And so it was just this weird weird crossover of I don't know who I am outside of these expectations and these identities I know who I was told to be I know who my parents had expectations um, individually between you know themselves not collectively but they had expectations of how I should live what life I should live what it's supposed to look like um, and I told that line and I paved the way for my siblings. I'm the oldest of eight siblings. And so I paved the way for my siblings as well. And, and uh, was essentially, um, not to segue, but uh, kind of a surrogate mother because my mom was not, she wasn't 100% stable to be emotionally available to all the kids. So I, I inherent, inherently took that role on. So that was another thing. The pivotal moment came when in Kansas and the sustainable farm, you know, two of our last two children were born in Kansas. So we've got five young kids under the age of 10. So we had five in 10 years. And I remember talking to someone, she was a wise woman, uh, much older than myself at the time. And she said, you've been the rock for everyone else. Who's your, who's your rock? What is that? And I was like, wow, that's weird. Never thought of it that way. Never thought that I know people come to me, my siblings come to me when they need something. White Dip can help me figure it out or white, by default, I'm older, shouldn't I? You know, and so that then I'd help them. Um, I was married. My husband could provide them a job in the construction company. So when my brothers were getting older, we would, you know, we were the go-to. Hey, if you need a job, I was filling up, you know, and so little things like that. And then my children started getting older too. And I was like, you know, their needs took precedence. My husband's needs, you know, he he's an adult, so he could figure things out mostly for himself. But from there, it's just like, who do I have? What do I have? And what am I ultimately seeking? Because there's a part of me that still does seek. And so who am I took, oh, I'd say, <laughs> see, from 31 to 46, I don't care if y'all know my age. It's all right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, you ask, I'll tell you. Even if you don't ask, I'll tell you sometimes, but we'll be careful <laughs> on that. Um, but it's, it's been about a 15-year journey from the point of actually saying, who, who am I? You know, really, how can I answer that question? And what does it look like to answer that question? And the start of that seeking, that journey itself has been about a 15-year journey to the point where now finally... Um, at this phase, I feel super confident in what I want to say, but even last year I had to still shed some layers, some, um, some, uh, binding, uh, some things, some old things that had just been holding, holding on that I had not addressed yet. And so who am I? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm a free spirit, um, you know, in love with this world, sees it for what it is, uh, won't stop at anything. We'll probably continue to always evolve. Love's big and we'll, you know, share everything I know. That's who I am. I love that. And and I think it it shines a light too on this idea that as much as, you know, I ask, well, who are you? But like you said, it's an evolution, right? Like the part of the beauty of discovering is we continue to grow and evolve. And it doesn't have to be in those parameters of 
this is like, it's going to, it's going to change. It's going to morph as we do. Right. It's, it's, right. so I, I love that you can shine a light. And I love the honesty of it takes time. It takes time to even allow yourself to ask yourself that question. It's a scary question for most of be like, even to acknowledge like, oh my God, what, what do I love? What would I want to be doing? How do I bring that to life? So I appreciate your openness and, and honesty and heck yes for age. I'm turning 50 this year. I'm proud of it. <laughs> wearing it with pride. Right. No more shame about this stuff. That's right. <laughs> they need to hear from us, whoever they is, but they need exactly, to hear from exactly. <laughs> the proverbial they. So what would you say then, because I I'm a firm believer sometimes rather than the doing it's like, there's a message we all have. There's a message that we're, I call it like a breath of life of what truly we, we come to. So many of us suppress it and yet there's such beauty in allowing it to open up. So what would, what at this stage anyways, would you say is your message, your breath of life? Uh, internal peace, 100% is absolutely paramount. That is what my my evolution process today looks like is a consistent seeking of internal peace. Now, will I ever achieve it? I don't know. You know, I, I can't say that from, from where I am today, I can't say yes or no, but I'm going to continue to seek. And then if I get to a point where I feel completely at peace and understand myself and, and can define certain things that they need to be defined, then great. That that's, that's great. But I'm not looking for that definitive answer to be the answer that I'm seeking. But internal peace is the hardest struggle because so much of our peace is bound up in who we are uh, and subsequently not being able to see what, what that evolution process needs or to peel back the layers because we feel that if we stop doing something this way or we uh, shift it this way, then we're going to let people down. And I had a real epiphany moment, I would say. Um, in December, just this last December, where I was going through some personal things, uh, nothing extravagant, but uh, definitely led me uh, to a deeper uh, space in my evolution process of finding out who, you know, looking for that peace, finding out who I am. And I remember riding down the road, my husband was driving, we're driving down the interstate, running errands, coming back from something. And I remember thinking this, and I don't know what preceded the thought, but it was a moment where I said, you know, if I actually said what I truly want to say to the personal people in my life that were involved in this, the time frame, if I actually said my true thoughts, I would piss them off. They would be mad at me, hurt. They would probably lash out at me. They, and these are people that are long standing in my life, you know, decades in my life. And, and there, it wasn't like a, an attack or anything, you know, I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I just had this major hardship that she was hiding from the world. It was an internal struggle more than anything. And it was me peeling back layers and me actually coming to a crossroad where it, it was just like, I actually recognized that moment saying, okay, then why am I not saying it? Because that doesn't mean I don't love them. That, that has nothing to do with that. So then what am I actually holding back? Why am I holding back? because I may be actually holding them back from their growth in and of itself. I cannot change them, but I have to be true to myself. And if being true to myself means that I need to say what absolutely is true to me, then all of a sudden that's, you know, that I, I, I have a conflict of interest when I'm not, you know, so I just that moment in time, I was like, if I said what I actually think, I would piss some people off. And I thought, oh, dang, my goal is not to piss people off. If anybody knows me, I I don't want to piss people off. I will find a way to say it to not piss people off. But the seriousness was personal to me because there was boundaries that needed to be established. There was a, um, my silence was inevitably lending people to, in this particular scenario, to believe that I was affirming or, or, um, backing them or their actions or their words or which I was not. And so I was like, then I'm not being true to myself and I have to actually say this. So cutting that short, I, yes, I did say it. Yes, it did get sticky. Yes, it was hard, but in that, but, but two things, 
in that particular moment, it needed to happen. The shift needed to happen. The decisions needed to be made. The cord needed to be cut. They needed to make decisions on their own without leaning on me to do so because I did not, could not take on the responsibility of what it was that they were looking for. I could no longer be filled that void for them. And they needed to release me from being on a pedestal that bound me to almost silence to a, to a degree. And then almost subsequently um, not living authentically. It was another layer of my evolution. So it was a very close person in my world. That story will come out later. Um, you know, so not that I'm hiding it for any particular reason, but I, I'm, I'm, choosing to articulate it a specific way and i will open the door to that uh with a tremendous amount of love because i do still love this person very very much no it's not my husband um he's super supportive i'll just clear the air right there but <laughs> the thing is is that that was that was intruding on my internal peace because and i have said this before to people that have asked me outside of the business world you know questions about things like you know how do they find that peace for themselves because while I can say yes that is my that is my world that is what I seek that is what I go after to the expense of turning it on to myself and looking at me and looking internally and saying I can't change other people but I can be a beacon of truth and a beacon of authenticity in every aspect and there was still some stones that needed to be turned over and so though subsequently in my quest for truth for myself then you know these get exposed rightfully so we're still on speaking terms it's great but decisions are made so that being said though we we are so terrified of making the wrong decision and the outcome being being catastrophic that it, that fear grips us into where we are it holds us hostage to not actually release ourselves or ask others to release us to lead to to undo that bind that maybe has been years in the making or maybe has been holding on for a long time because we fear what's on the other side of that and i didn't want to let someone down i don't want to be the stumbling block for others that that goes back into some old belief systems that i cannot you are to not be a stumbling block for others. And then of course I'm like, well, maybe I should just shut up and stick back here because if I say anything, I might stu inadvertently stumble somebody. And then of course, dang, I'm in trouble, right? I'm going, you know, old beliefs. And so in doing that, we look at the fear. We, we look at what's on the, what we perceive is on the other side of it. And it's such a simple truth that what we think is on the other side of something we have no idea until we start in that direction and when you start in that direction as long as you are leading with truth and integrity which i know that that's that's foremost in all of my thinking when you lead with truth and integrity then you are not going to be a stumbling block that's not going to be as catastrophic as you might have feared because there's a lot of input towards that fear and maybe there's not much that is going to be in the way of of that forward progress and when you start evolving there then it releases them other people to be able to go and evolve themselves too because that could be a two-way bind that somebody has to break it you know so in doing that then I was able to move myself out and then it opened up another layer that I needed to work on that I needed to continue to strive for and something very specifically to look back on and I'll give you point in case my childhood from the point of of my first memories to about being 18. I moved, met my husband when I was about 18. So then that was a whole different life. I feel like I have a series of lives going on here. But that my whole childhood, I refused until this whole section came up at the end of last year. I wouldn't look back. Yeah. I went and visited the town that I would say I lived in the most. Um, I lived there for four years. That's where my husband met me. I only lived there for four years. But to me, that's the only place that I can say would be closest to home if I had one um, outside of, of Colorado, which is where we've I've lived since 95. But in, in that space, I recognize that I have to honor that little version of me because there is 18 years of stuff that I have inadvertently 
not gone back to visit because there were ties that were binding me that I could not and would not look at that until I got to the point where I said, stop, there are patterns here that I'm not addressing. There are things here that are not getting covered. There, there is a young version of me that as I parent my two daughters in their teen years, one's 17, one's 18 at this point, as I parent them, I want them to be strong, independent women that are able to withstand these things. As I do that, then, then I have to rattle that cage a little bit. I have to shift that. And I cannot stay in a state of peace if I do not choose to look at those layers. Because then I'm not being true to myself. I love that. And, and, and you're right, because there is this idea of like, there's like bad parts of us and things we, you know, that's where people like have, hold with shame or hold with doubt and hold fear. And it's like, we can't speak them. God forbid we, we let them out of the cage, but those fears, those emotions hold so much, hold so much, right? Like yep. details and, and tr yeah. And, and to be able to, and it's not even about eradicating them, right? Like people think, look, I have to like fight them. It's about embracing. It's about opening up to allowing whatever message that emotion has because all all emotions were either protecting you from something or trying to keep you safe right so it's it's but there's such beauty in 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 what you say there and and i love because when you talk about like the emotion and, and knowing because we have such fear with the emotion but if we're realistically the emotion isn't going to you know implode on us and eat us right like it, it's it's hard right. to move through but we're not actually going to die from it and so to allow ourselves that space to be like okay let's begin to explore it with compassion with yes. openness I, I think that is so beautiful and and it it ties in well too because knowing how you you do lead entrepreneurs how you do work with them a lot of your message is exactly that allowing all of all of those who want to be able to share like that to 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 show those vulnerable parts because part of it is releasing us from the bind and being able to speak what has been moved through what has occurred and like you said the same way with you're doing it so that you're giving permission to your daughters to see that it's not so scary we don't have to shy away from that that that's that's Again, leading by example, leading by authenticity and resonance. I, I love it. I love it. So, and it's something, something to add to that too. Uh, I think Sarah, was it you and I that touched on this subject at one point in various conversations? It might have been, but I'm going to go back to this. There was a moment. Um, there was a contract when I was con contracted to build programs and then um, teach from the stage for an influencer, mm -hmm. and they wanted a powerful woman, right? You know, and and of course I'm Gen X. That's kind of the rise of women having a voice and uh, you know legitimately having a voice. You know, so of course you know I what, what's my space inside of this when a lot of how I was raised was old patriarchy where you don't, you know, and so that's kind of you know, finding the balance inside of that while still having some of those, uh, you know, strong values, but yet with, with an open mind and an open heart. So doing that, my presence has been conflicting for certain people and at certain times. And so that gets misconstrued as white as a powerful woman. And okay, okay, fine. You know, if somebody wants to say I'm a powerful woman, great. If they want to say I'm a, you know, royal B word, great. You know, I mean, it, at, at this point, I don't it, label me. It be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in that, I remember a situation where it was one of the first times I was coming up in front of an audience uh, at somebody else's audience, and I was getting ready to teach a segment. And the words that I was told by multiple people was like, go in there and get them to do the work. Why did, you know, get them to do the work, you know what they need to do, you know, hammer it into them. Of course, I didn't deliver it that way, right? Because it's not my nature to do it. And I was like, okay, that was a huge disappointment to them. And I was just like, why? I don't understand that. So I was never directly told that, right? But it would just come around, you know, I'm very observant. I listen, I, you know, I'm in the room with a, you know, a lot of people. And so I would just hear these things and then there would be little blips said and little things like, well, are you going to hand it to him next time, right? Or, or mm, that was, oh, you got really close to being super powerful on that one. I'd be like, okay, well, you know, somebody give me a breakdown of what you're, what that looks like. Cause I'm just going in, like I do with anything, I'm just going to riff and answer the questions. 
um, or teach the content as I know it to be. And so long story short on that one, there came a point where I wasn't exactly the voice that they were looking for. And I was like, cool, kind of felt that. I mean, that's a mutual understanding, I think, at this point. You know, it's great. I did, but did what I was asked to do. I created what I was asked to do. I fulfilled as I was asked to do. I understand what, you know, I understand that, you know, there's not going to be a movement forward. No problem. Um, and so when that came about, though, I found it fascinating that the expectation to be a powerful woman means I had to lead with masculine energy hmm. and drive it like a pillar in order to be powerful. And I was like, actually, no, 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 it does. Who defined that? Who defined that? Who said it has to be like that? Who even said that I was brought into the a scenario in order to drive a narrative of pushing people that way? Corporate, masculine, you know, drive. And I was just like, but that is like, if you, if these people would have looked at my content, I'm not that. It never was that. So there was a disconnection on the conversation. But because I am independently certain because I choose to undo the layers of myself. I can't change anyone else, but I can certainly be better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. And I will always strive for that, regardless of the percent of measurement on it. But because I do that, that's perceived as powerful. And then that perception of power in, you know, for a woman is either taken to towards a degree of wanting it this way or an expectation of how that's perceived over here. And I said, well, how come we can't fulfill, like we said, teach and mentor, nurture, which is a common trait for women anyways, and then also be able to show up authentically in a capacity that is loving for everyone. Why Why would that not be considered powerful? Nobody had that. an answer. I, I, I was looking for a poster because in, in we talked once and I have exactly that written is nurture the audience. Yep. And I, I loved that, that thing because it, it is, it's that heart centric. It's like, how do we share the message? How do we love, love, love people into their greatness? Right. And it doesn't have to, I, I love what you're saying there because like this idea of status quo. And, and I think that is one of the strongest things of when we can step into our voice, step into what power means to us, which means for myself anyway, it means to be aligned with my own word and my integrity. Yes. And then be able to challenge that status quo and say, who says it has to look like that? We get to right. design it on our own sometimes too. And it can be a scary space to step in. And I, I don't know enough about men to speak as intelligently, but as sure. women, we are kind of brought, you know, we have that self-negotiator, that auto yes, auto no responder. Like there's a lot of like the people pleasing where it's like, we want to. And I mean, I bit my tongue many, many a time in my corporate career because it was like, oh, I was so concerned of how would it be, you know, brought back. And so I love I love that you're leading the way for everyone, not just women, but to step into that essence of like, what do you believe? What do you think? And how can you bring that forward again for entrepreneurs? entrepreneurs and coaches yes but even in your own life right your message crosses the boundaries of of business into because and again part of what i think is so powerful in, in how you're sharing that too is it shows that it is not bravado of business it is who you are and when you want to have a business that is in resonance what better way than to actually be and create with the same with the same yes. audacity and, and I, love. And I, I'll add to that, that the business model of that example is fair. They can have, anyone can have the business model they want. The transparency should have been up front as to what was, at, you know, what the, what was wanted of me, you know, cause then I could speak to it, but I didn't know that that was the desire nor that I was perceived as that way, which is totally fine. You know, people can run business as they see fit. I can't change someone's culture. I'm not a leadership expert. That's going to go in and shift someone's culture from the inside out. There are great qualified people to do that. What I can do is then look at the situation for what it truly is um, with or without the dialogue on it and just say, you know what, this doesn't actually fit for me. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I think it's time I move on. And absolutely understood 
an exceptional ending conversation, an exceptional, you know, uh, dialogue back and forth as to where, you know, what they're doing, what I'm, you know, whatever, no hard feelings on it because I didn't turn it around and point it out. I didn't have any um, egregious reason to do so right now, if something was ne necessitated that conversation, sure, but it didn't. So it was an oversight on their business model and the expectation or the needs that they had and what they perceived in, in me. This happens all the time in business. Mm -hmm. This happens all the time in the entrepreneurial space of, of overlap and um, um, partnerships. Or uh, I see it a lot in the summit space where people tie in together and do something. Then all of a sudden, and I, I've said this. If you're going to do a summit with people, put it all on the table on what your vision of a summit looks like and get that out because that way then there's no perceived expectation and that's not what the other, you know, other people are willing to deliver nor are they seeing that as necessary to deliver. So I think it boils down to communication. Communication mm -hmm. is the biggest tool that we have in this space in this time and being able to uh, have dialogue across all planes, across all avenues, across entrepreneurship in general, because we live in an entrepreneurial world at this point. We live in a creator society. No longer is it entrepreneurial corporate and then personals over here. We now, since the last four years, and really the last two years, we have a crossover, hence the creator world, hence people, you know, brands, big name brands moving into the space of hiring small unknown people for authenticity, because no longer are we polished and perceived or putting up the front of the, the consumer wants the conversation. The consumer wants the, to build the authentic trust. The consumer wants to feel like they get to know the person. And the corporation is having to adjust that conversation. It just so happened that um, the, the, the corporate drive was phasing itself to a different degree in the entrepreneurial space. And I just happened to be a little bit ahead of my time on the conversation of such. But no harm, no foul on how people choose to operate a business. Sometimes it needs to be a business that requires a very stern conversation and a very masculine energy to drive the process forward. It's necessary. But in the coaching space, I think we are right for 100% more listening, as coaches ought to do, good coaches, um, more understanding, more nurturing, more leading from example, and more transparency, 100%. I love that. There, there's so many avenues out of that section we could go to. And, and it's true because even in more and more, I mean, I think the last two, three years in particular, there's been a large sense of distrust in the general public, right? And so that ability to speak directly, well, directly sounds too aggressive, but like like to be connected to, to show the, I mean, there, there's even like the trends of like superstars are showing pictures of like with their dirty laundry in the back. Right. Because like, how do we connect? How do we show that? Hey, we're all, we're all that for me, there's a lot we've moved in. We've had so much technology that it's really kind of moving into this sense of how do we feel connected? How do we feel seen? How do we feel heard, understood for ourselves and for others? And, and very much what you said there is to, it, it sounds so cliche, but to walk the talk, right? Like it's not yeah. enough. We don't want to be following and believing in people and see them for who we think they are and then find out on the side. Like, I don't know how many times there's been people that I thought were so awesome. And then you hear this interview and they were like, just terrible with someone. You're like, and I'm devastated because I'm like, oh, the persona. So yeah. bringing them together to be like, hey, you can fully be yourself. And it, I think it helps remove this fear that we need to, I, I, I worked for years in sales. And so I had many different, and it was always this idea of like, well, okay, Sarah, these are like, you know, um, this group of people you can't swear in front of, well, these people, you should be more this. So you were constantly feeling like you had to adapt and you, you begin to lose who you are when you do that. Right. So this idea of how do you be in, in alignment and in resonance with all the parts of you, I think really supports everyone business or out, outside of business, like in our personal lives to give ourselves permission to be ourselves and just show up. Right. Cause I know, I, I mean, there's, if you look at in the coaching industry in general, 
how many people are trying to reach people to be like, Hey, be your authentic self. Don't be ashamed. Yes. And you're not, not everyone's going to like you. And like you said, with the business that their view of how they want to offer, that's perfectly fine. But are we aligned to those people? Can we move forward with it? Well, and are we trying to fit something in, you know, a, a round peg in a square hole, you know, are we trying to, to mirror somebody's teaching or somebody's strategy or somebody's way of doing something that maybe isn't authentically ours to adopt you know i mean there's always elements of learning that we pull elements through um that align but sometimes in the early stages of learning the ropes of business or the ropes of something new a new skill or a new a new pathway what ends up happening is that one we don't have enough trust in ourselves which is 100% valid because it's new, right? It's a, it's a new space. There's someone that's always going to know more than we know on a topic. That's very true. They've been around in it for a little bit longer. And our and that weakens our trust to be able to say that our unique voice, which is the, the actual crux of the entire conversation of who we are and why we're going to lead other people, that, that piece of it then we don't show up with it. And so stripping away all the elements of teaching is now the new standard, which ought to be presented because that is that uniquely is a conversation that is uh, desired in the space of knowledge, in the space of, of learning how to turn our knowledge into uh, an income or turn our, you know, to, uh, I don't want to say, I was going to say capitalize on our knowledge, right? But that sounds so very, you know, capitalistic, you know, and it's not intended to be that. It's yeah. fair, right? Business is business. It's a whole conversation in and of itself, charging, you know, charging for business, for, for things in business. Now, with that, though, the number one thing that if anyone takes anything away from what I say and how I show up in this world is to genuinely just be you. So take elements of what you learn and how you learn them and someone else's strategy and say, this works for me. This isn't exactly my thing. I'm going to sideline that part of it and just put it together into your own unique spin on it and then run with that. The biggest thing I could say is that content for the sake of creating content, because that's the marketing vehicle at this point, you cannot have a business, no business out there doesn't have content on social media. It is the world we live in. And so if we're going to take a process and we're going to uh, embrace a way to do something as far as content goes, where we break it up and say, hey, this post, I'm going to put a story to it. This post, I'm going to, you know, put a strategy to it. This post, I'm going to do some, you know, a framework of such. Those are good guides, but do not get married to them because those will not be sustainable. You and your unique self sharing uniquely why that topic matters to you is going to be what moves the conversation forward and will be sniffed out for years to come between being genuine versus copy copy and paste or cookie cutter and and we see that in the ai space you know and i know you and i talked about that but i'll segue it anyways um <laughs> yeah i was going to say you know i wanted to sneak that in anyway because it's, it, it's it's really it's, 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 it's fascinating and and it's somewhere where a lot of people business or not are i think are are going to find struggle with that it, so two things with that we we're at the um the first thing let me close it out you know let me circle it around to what what authentic content looks like um What's what's driving this narrative right now, and we're going to see this rapidly shift because now we live in a, an era where things are going to cycle within a six month window, right? It used to be two years and then it was down to a year. And now we're literally looking at three to six month cycles. And so the dawn of AI, the dawn of, of content for the sake of following a process and putting it out there, more is better than nothing, more, you know. Uh, quantity over quality per se that that drives narrative now what happens though is the general consumer the general populace that consumes this content can tell why because there is no emotional connection between the two it can't be it can they can they figure it out they being the proverbial you know ai creators maybe Maybe it gets to that point in the future. I don't know. But as it sits today, as we are today in this evolution of uh, artificial intelligence, being able to 
ease some of the time constrained tasks or ease the simplicity of not having to ultimately learn the depth of something, letting a, a machine or a, an algorithm do it for us. What happens then is that if that is taken away, then we no longer have the capacity to produce content, even if it's crap content, right? It becomes a crutch. Wouldn't it be better in the process of building a business as we are pillars of authenticity and integrity to be authentic and stand with integrity to actually learn what that looks like to be authentic and with integrity and then utilize tools to become efficient instead of utilizing the tool to fill a void while we ignore the other. That's where it fits in. So I'm not going to say it's the, the, you know, the, the, terrible beast, a terrible beast of, of a machine, I think it will evolve quickly. Um, I think we're going to see iterations of it rapidly. Um, but just like anything good out there, it can be used nefariously as well. I know. I so, I so agree because I, we were chatting before we jumped on and, and I had taken a course to learn how to use it like imagery, just to be aware, right? Like part of part of when you're in industry, you want to know, even when I was in sales, you want to kind of know what's out there. And it was funny because I did this workshop and I don't use it for my writing, but I just having used and been testing like prompts, I suddenly was like blank. My mind was blank. I was sitting there like, oh my God, I, I have to deconnect. Like I totally need to go off in nature and listen to my podcast and let let that voice come back. And, and, you know, so much of what you share and teach and coach is exactly that connecting to the voice, how to write it, how to, you know, bring it to life. And I was laughing. Cause I was like, Oh, I, I, I was like, we couldn't have had this interview at a better time. I was like, wow, it's amazing. But you're right. Cause a lot of people are promoting this idea of like, do it fast. And, and I, part of my thing always is, is our voice having those courageous conversations, not to lose that the source, right? Like, I don't want to get woo woo, but at the same time, a part of, a part of us is, you know, there's some message that we're, 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 there's a, a card I pulled called the pillar of light. It's like, we are here to bring to life something that was supposed to be created and it can only be done through our authentic voice. Yeah. So if we're yeah. suddenly masking that and just rushing through the process, how do we evolve? How do we stay on that journey? If we stop doing the lessons, because part of, and a lot of what I know you teach why dove is, you know, there are the stages as you're going to be doing those posts, as you're sharing your story, as you're sharing your message, you're going to have, you know, your own emotions come up. You're going to have your own stuff. So I love that you kind of, um, kind of can bring light and you're right. It's not a good or bad, right? It is a tool right. and it's there. Right. It's right. just, we want to use it and not let it use us. I think would be the way that exactly. I would kind of look at that. So I can't well, believe we, we've already been on for we already did it. minutes. Why that could keep going forever and ever and ever. Um, I wanted to ask you maybe, I mean, to point you, there's so much coming on. So I want to leave time. I know you have, um, the coach tool, I can always say it wrong launch kit. Um, you have a book coming up though. I'd love to touch yeah. on that. I'm sure a lot of the people here would love to hear about, uh, yeah. how was this birthed within you and how is this a, a next stage in your own kind of journey? So whispers of the heart and soul, uh, it's actually, as with most of my content, is actually a dialogue with myself, right? And, and um, if anybody's, you know, hacking what White Dip does, right? Because I know that there are people that watch me, you know, and and consume my content to see how I tick. And that ha that's a common thing, right? So I'll just let you guys know that the conversation was more of a poetic way for me to uh, peel back a layer during a period of time that I was having to go to another layer myself and make decisions. And it, it coincided with the same conversation I had myself that if I said what needed to be said or what I know to be true and, and didn't, you know, said it with love and, and utmost, you know, uh, kindness and compassion, but also said my truth. If I truly said my truth in my personal world, then it's going to rattle a few feathers. Whispers is a moment for me to, was me processing through that, right? So it's an external, it was me taking the external dialogue, no, internal dialogue and putting it out in front of me, right? And so 
it's my heart and soul. My heart is emotional. My, my soul is wise, you know, so it's this, it's, it's this tangle, this, this movement. And of course, most people know that I enjoy writing. And so it was my way of putting it together in a form that just fits, right. It fits for me to process for myself, the conversation that I externalized as I did that, as I ultimately did that, I recognized that that was when I said oh, there, there was a section of my world that I absolutely have not looked at in the same vein that I should be able to put the same vulnerability and authenticity to everything else that I have. And so Whispers was my crack in the door uh, on moving between layers. Nice. I love and I, I love it. I, I love the poeticness. I love the dialogue and love the creative element of it. I love um, the visualization that I, you know, as I was going through, you know, the motions of it, the, the formation of, you know, putting it into kind of linear process, you know, I mean, you want people when they read a book to, to follow through, you oh, know, wow. what are you getting to at the end, you know, so that, but then ultimately realizing that it was the gateway that I needed and the process I needed to go through to shift into a different layer so then I can actually be more resolute with myself. So I can be at that next stage. So I can be moving into the direction of not just business, but true authenticity. Going back to the AI conversation, it would be much more profound for us to be able to look at ourselves and get to know what that, what who we are and what we, you know, the capacity of what we can deliver to this world and then become efficient with the tools instead of constantly kicking that can down the road and not ever doing that and then living with regret at the end saying, I should have dove into the layers. Why did I wait so long to dive in the layers? Guess what, guys? Life is right now. Mm -hmm. This is what we are only guaranteed this moment. We are not guaranteed the future. And in fact, there is so much in the future we don't know anything about. So I had to also be at peace with my past, you know, and, and it's not catastrophic per se, but it's deep. And I think it's the silent depth of it that I disregarded for so long thinking, you know, strong, independent people don't get rattled by those little things. The depth of those things, you know, there was nothing visible or, or shaken, you know, so, so then if I'm saying be vulnerable and in my vis business, I can talk about vulnerability and I can shine a light on the possibility and I can give hope. Then why am I only doing it there if I'm not willing to do it on the other end? And so that's the door that I cracked open. Whispers cracked open for me. I love that. I love that. It's fascinating too. And then we'll kind of just a finish of a question, but you know, it's funny how, and I think it, talks to like what we're we're discussing and emotional and being able to be congruent with it is like you know well i had all this it wasn't it wasn't catastrophic like we don't even like a part of us doesn't necessarily even have to put it on a list right like because right. catastrophic is different for each of us and i know for myself i held that's it i felt shame because i was like I shouldn't feel this. Like I I'm compared to many, I'm, I'm like super well off. Like who am I? And so I felt guilty. And yet that allows us to kind of bury those emotions that yeah. allows us to, to think, you know, Oh, I, I'm just being silly. Right. Like, right. Right. Chin up, keep going. You know, that corporate right. female men and male. Don't mentality. be dramatic. Yeah. yeah. And yet, so, so, I mean, for, for me, that idea is like, we don't need permission, even whatever we're feeling to give it that space. And I think that's so powerful. Open up for a few minutes for people to speak, but I also want to know, because like in the coaching field, kind of uh, two, two kind of questions, what would you guide or suggest? Because I know a lot of people who move into this get so overwhelmed with the amount of offers and different things out there. And I'm, I've done it too. I've spent a lot more money than I probably should have. Um, but like that chasing, right? Rather than doing and being, it's this idea of like, oh, FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. Like if, if someone was new and just starting out and or midway through, right? Like not yet established, what what yeah. would kind of yeah. be your biggest love that you could share with them to? Uh, I got a big one for you. Okay, FOMO is a lie. Every single offer out there is going to be restructured and re-offered in a similar vein down the road. So if you don't do it today, then it doesn't mean it's gone forever. 
I don't care. Bonuses aside, I, I, I have a love hate relationship with bonuses too, for that very reason, because they're, they're a FOMO driver. Now, any time that and FOMO is fear of missing out, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime we are leading with making a decision, because if we don't, then this could happen. And there's been marketing ploys that play into this very specifically to stop right there. Hold yourself for a minute. Do not purchase or invest on impulse. Do your due diligence, research, make sure that the decision is a, a logical decision for where you are right now and the gaps that you have right now. And if you're not sure what those are, then look around, but do the due diligence of seeking and do the due diligence of looking and learning and um, in being inquisitive and doing research. Because when you get into the business space, no matter what level you're at, uh, as far as an entrepreneur, you're a lifetime researcher at that point. So you're going to need to research anyway, whether you're starting at ground zero or you're halfway there or you're doing really well, you're still always going to research. So apply that same opportunity of research to whatever decisions you are looking at in order to improve, you know, go to the next step or the, you know, the next level for you, but never buy because somebody has a clock or a ticker counting down. Don't. I love that. I love that. I should have asked that advice years ago. <laughs> hey, me too. I speak from spending a lot of money. <laughs> oh, and, and, you know, we're pretty close. If you were to impart like at the end, I mean, there's so much we could go to your, your marketing, I don't want to say uh, throw flowers at your feet guru. Like there's, you just, it all just comes so naturally to you. So there's so many tangents and conversations we could have, but for, for anyone in the, in the space in wanting to even think about it, cause it's still a, yep. a beautiful and, and growing yep. And I think it will continue to, if anyone were to take away, and it doesn't have to be on the business side, White Dove, but like from this conversation up until now, what, what would you, what would you say are kind of like the, the key takeaways that you'd love? If you hear nothing else from this, what would you love them to hear? It's simpler than you're making it. It's simpler than you're being told it is. There is nothing more to this industry than to show up, to speak your voice, even imperfectly to share what you have available, regardless of price point, and to be willing for people to say no to you. That's mm. okay. Someone's always going to say no to you. You're always going to say no to someone else. So let's take that same thing and apply it to this business space as well, that it is so simple. You are creating amazing things, amazing opportunities for transformation for people at various price points. Your only job is to tell them that it exists. That's it. And you could tell them there, there's really less rules about it now than there was five years ago. You can literally tell them however you want and give them the opportunity to take it or leave it. Yeah, I love it. That's I love it. it. And we didn't have a lot of time to go through it, but I mean, White Dev, we know for anyone listening, like your whole process is like writing letters yeah. and, and sharing the journey, which I, for me is what attracted me to you because I also love writing and I love creating. And it, it was like, when I met you, I was like, can it really be this simple? <laughs> I was like, what has been going on? So, so I love that. And before we open up the state, we're, I'm, I'm, you know, you're, there's so much wealth of your knowledge, but anyone who's watching this now or later down the road, if they are interested in following you in reaching out to you, how do they, how do they jive and vibe with you, White Dove? The easiest, most direct point of contact is a DM on any of the social media channels comes to me. I always respond. Second of all, I have my regular standard, you know, industry standard industry issued website, white of And then of course the marketplace where, where all my creative ideas live at coach launch toolkit.com. Awesome. And for, I'll be watching when I upload this, it'll have the links attached. So anyone can jump on and take a peek. So I'd love to, just, we have a few minutes, uh, wait to on your schedule, but does anybody have questions that they would love to ask about White Dove, about the process, about um, even moving into the industry or expanding on that confidence or having those courageous conversations with clients or in your own life more? I'd love to open up the floor and have a, 
share if anybody would love to. So raise your hand. Valerie raised her hand. There we go. You there? Oops. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, I just figured I'd ask if nobody else was asking, but if somebody else has a question, I don't want to take up your time. I was just curious how you edited your your book. Did you edit do the editing yourself or did you use a I, publisher? No, I did it myself. And here's why is because Sarah mentioned this, that she found this out there and it's going to be part of my uh, writing process. Uh, in the future. I have a book that I actually wrote a few years ago called The Farm That Built Me. Now, I'm not asking anyone to go run out and do that because they're, that, that's a whole different timeline that was part of an evolution process then. Um, they're pretty gritty stories from the farm. Just going to just gonna give you a heads up on that one. But that was not the story that was needing to be told, but that was the story I was only capable of telling at that point. That being said, I actually hired someone when I wrote that book to... Um, to format it for me so I could self-publish it on Amazon. And so I went the self-publishing route with it, that book. And so when I was writing Whispers, um, I was like, oh yeah, I have that formatted version of it to upload into Amazon. So it was, you know, that's how I got all the dimensions properly, the spacing properly, blah, blah, blah. So that's how I did it. I did format it. It's just in a Word document. Um, and then that way, uh, when I upload it into Amazon, then it's already formatted for a six by nine book. Amazing. Thank you. Welcome. Lizzie, you had your hand up before. Hey, hi, Sarah. Hi, White Dove. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been amazing. Uh, White Dove, I'm your number one fan, just so everyone knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, we, we all love, love you. This. We all love how you make us think that we don't need to chase the shiny objects because you're, you are so real and so authentic and you speak from here. And I know I'm going to get more than value with you. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for being in my world and for opening up doors for me that I'm exploring now. And Soul Seeker has been amazing. Um, You've made me cry many times, so thank you for that. <laughs> I should sign up a myself. great creative. I should, I should record myself doing an ugly cry face and just sending it to you. <laughs> like, I, just wanted, I just wanted to say thank you to both of you. Sarah, you're amazing. I love what you do and I love your message and I love how you are impacting the world through your amazing vision. And White Dove, thank you. Love you both. We love you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, and, and, you know, I, Liz, part of what you're saying there is, I think is a beautiful example of the power of, because you also have a message. I mean, Valerie, everyone I, I can see here, you know, we all are on different journeys, right? And and I, I can be moving through something, but by, by Liz and by Valerie and Betty and Michelle and Lynette and Magda and Patricia and White Dove all sharing their own we see all the parts and that they're all okay. And that I, I think for myself, it's that commonality of realizing you're not alone. When I, when I started my own transformational journey, I honestly thought I was like a wart in, you know, on a butt because I was like, I, I didn't even know that, like you didn't dare speak it. Right. And so I didn't know to look for help. I didn't know. And so I think there's such beauty and grace when we can share our journey and for those who are yet to have their voice, to have that ability to 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 say, "Hey, I need help," or I, I I'm looking for something, by by us sharing our own journeys and and what we know and what we've learned, it it has such a beautiful way of connection and growth and learning. And it's just, I think, really, especially now, you know, when when there is so much divisiveness in society, yes. I think it's so beautiful to be part of where we can show the the commonalities and the sameness that we truly all are. So why Dev, I could keep going on for hours. Cause you just like, I could pick your brain for a thousand years. <laughs> um, so anybody watching, please, you know, I wrote in, in the invitation is like, even if you just need a dose of, of truth and beauty and words that like Liz said, can make you cry. 
have wiped up in your feed <laughs> because the message is so impactful. And so you do, you speak in such a way that is really, it's, it is such a, a journey you, you walk someone along with. And, and I think what's important too, what I love about how you share the messages, you, sh you, I've watched some of the students go from thinking they couldn't write to writing some of the most beautiful posts. Yeah. And I think this creative is within everybody. It's Agreed. just to what stage have someone nurtured it, right? That word nurture coming back again. So, so why Dove, any parting love words, counsel? <laughs> and this has been such a pleasure to be here with you, Sarah, and to, uh, to be on your program with you. I, I am honored. And uh, this is a step that, uh, that I didn't know I needed. And so thank you for asking, daring to ask. Thank you for having me on here. And for everyone that hears it, that's here today or, and hears it on the replay, it is truly simpler than we've been told for years. We've been told it has to be hard. And if it's not hard, it's not real. That's, that's wrong because it can be simple when it's authentic and with integrity and we can ease into that path of knowing and then be able to walk that path. And in the process, we guide people and show people what's possible. Mm, I love it. I love it. Bye Dev. Thank you so much. Everyone here. Thank you so much. Whether you're watching this in replay, as I said, everyone who signed up will be getting a copy of the replay. If you're watching this and you haven't, reach out to us anyways, we'll get you a copy. Our, our mission is to share the message and the love. So truly an honor and a pleasure. White Dove, thank you. And to everybody, keep sharing your heart of impact. Keep daring bravely. Keep taking one small step forward. And like White Dove said, all the only person you're in competition with is who you were yesterday and striving to be who you want to become tomorrow. And it really, it comes down to that. And everybody, everybody is worthy. So let's believe, be, and live a life we love. Thank you.